Listen, hate the traffic, hate the politicians, love the Red Sox when they win. Forget about the Red Sox. We're the ones that need the win. Did you confirm the address of Firewall Travel? Yep. And the locals assure me they can process the subpoena two hours after we get there. Hopefully we nail Collins Farwell for lunch. And why do you think he's actually going to talk to me? Put it to Farwell that if we buy Erno's story, that makes Farwell an accessory to murder. Either he called Erno and told him about Squirrel in the locket, or Erno told him. If Farwell sticks to his story, we can blow Erno or die out of the water. Well, and if he clams up? Well, tell him it's grand jury time. According to Boston, Collins has found Jesus. He speaks in public of his newfound peace. Won't look so good if all that drug stuff gets revisited. No problem. Nice skirt. Mr. Raven, what can I do for you? I wanted to buy some perfume. Ah, <clears throat> what did you have in mind? Uh, no, maybe you could suggest something. Is the person older? Young? Teenage? Well, what do you use? Von Dete. Oh, uh, sounds like a perfume, all right. I, um... I saw you in court yesterday. That was awfully brave of you. Brave? That's, I think that's rather overstating the case. Um, would you like the toilet water or the perfume? Well, you can more with the toilet water. Water is the free part. I really did want to talk to you. I mean, I'll buy the toilet water. Well, you don't have to buy anything to talk to me. No, I know that, I'm, but I'll, I'll buy it anyway. You know, I've never bought toilet water before. <laughs> I guess that, that tells you something about me. Yes, it does. What did you think? I thought Mr. Air and I laid out a very chilling, compelling story on direct. You were good. I'd forgotten your courtroom style. Very uh, unadorned. Muriel Wynn made some serious inroads, though. I don't think he could take a couple of days of cross from her. So what's happening? I believe Muriel has gone to Boston to try to locate Collins Farwell, Erna's nephew. To depose him? I'm preparing a motion for Harlow to that effect. You'll need him, I think. Harlow might buy Erdai on his own, but the Court of Appeals won't. Not that you need my opinion. Actually, I'd value it. It's nice of you to say so. Well, I should be getting back. She'll go far, I think. I've got a lot of what it takes. Well, Jillian. Did you have dinner with me? I don't think so, Arthur. No? No. Well, I, I, I hope I didn't offend by asking. No, you didn't do that. Onwards and sideways. Good luck. Good luck. Gee, I hope we don't run out of gas somewhere. Dream on. We do our work, we're home by nine. Ah, and I thought you were cutting out on Talmadge for a blast from the past. No, I gave all that up when I got married. You? Oh, losing you cured me. That means we were one another's last infidelity, which is a form of true love. Well, actually, I wasn't being unfaithful to anyone, Larry. Not being married at the time. Ah, lawyer talk. <laughs> well, I'll take that as a compliment, that you stayed on the straight and narrow after me. Now, that is not a compliment. A compliment would be you were the best ever, Miriam. Anyway... Quitting screwing around was just growing up. Yeah, I guess that's kind of the way I think about it. But you were the best, Mary. Want to find a country road and make out? <laughs> oh, my God. You are incorrigible, Starzak. Well, encourage me, then. Damn it. 
I, where did I put it? What? The Boston DA's office emailed me a current picture of Farwell. Think you recognize him? Who knows? Last time I saw him, he was wearing orange. I swear I put it in here. Hey, Mrs. Gray, how are you today? Long time no see. Never mind. Farwell. Farwell. Jail. What you want, man? What the hell you think you're doing? You do time, you don't react so good to cops. Yeah, well, running's a good way to get back in the home, my friend. Uh, yeah, well, that's why I stopped. Let me tell you why I'm here. Now, see, I already know why you're here. My lawyer told me. Oh. You got a lawyer? On account of what? On account of what Erno's just been saying. That's what I want to talk to you about, all this crap about you and him planning to frame Squirrel. That's what it is, right? A lot of crap. Mr. Ayers, he says I don't answer to nothing. He says I just take the fifth. Mr. Ayers. Jackson Ayers. Yeah, that's right. You got Jackson Ayers on your side, you gotta be in a lot of trouble. No, see, I ain't in no trouble, mister. Now, I used to be something deep, yes, indeed. But not no more. It's because the Lord Jesus, he done taken all that up off of me. Yeah, well, uh, forget the Lord Jesus for just a minute. It just comes down to this. Either you called Erno with the thing on Squirrel, like you told us, and got a plea, or Erno called you. First means you're in the clear, second means you're an accessory to murder. Now, which is it? See, the thing of it is, you clam up, it comes down to subpoena time and a grand jury. They'd love to hear a three-time felon take the fifth in the murder case. It'd be easier to explain it to me. Yeah, well, there's a theory I done heard once or twice before, boss. No, yeah, well, maybe you got some stuff on your conscience, Collins. Hey, we ain't on no first-name basis, mister. And whatever I got on my conscience, that's between me and my savior. Look, there ain't a night that goes by where I don't get down on my knees and ask my lord a host to forgive me for what I did to that poor sinner, Romeo Gandalf. Just to save my own skin. Wait a minute, tell me again. Lord of hosts, he actually said that to you? If I can make that up. These born-again perps talk like that all the time, Muriel. Lord God this, Jehovah that. Yeah, but still, in all, Arthur Raven can make it sound pretty significant. Yeah. Well, Arthur wasn't there. You know, I'm thinking of telling him. Well, I don't feel compelled to under the circumstances. Of course, if we depose him... He says he'll take the fifth. No, that's Jackson Ayers. Jackson would have advised Jesus to take the fifth. I know what he did, as I recall. Well, now, that's a blasphemous thing to say. I didn't know you got religion, Muriel. Well, I actually did a lot of praying when I was trying to conceive it back out. Anyway, how come this Collins Farwell gets himself a lawyer days after his uncle gets up and admits to murder three times over? I think Erno hired Ayers. What do you think? He must have known when he talked, we'd come looking for his nephew. But... I think Erno's trying to outrun us. Get his boatload of crap on the record, die before we can take it apart. He'd be flat on his back, smiling at the set. <laughs> Let 
Listen. There's snow on the ground between here and home. We could be all night on the road. Want to spend the night? Here? I mean, I know you don't have an eye count or anything. Well, actually, I am. I threw in a toothbrush just in case. Just in case? Mm -hmm. In case it took longer to get the subpoena, which it did. Huh? <sighs> what is it with you? Huh? I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not, you know, offended or anything. I'm actually kind of, kind of flattered. But, um, you're not still beating that drum from all those years ago. Seven years isn't a long time ago. Not when nothing like you ever came along again. And I'll tell you something else, Muriel, about the back of my neck. I get around you and the hair on it tingles. And that don't happen by itself. <sighs> There's such horse manure. Don't mean you know you're doing it. Just means I'm picking it up. I get the car. I told you I didn't do it. They found and let me loose now. There's still the little matter of your confession. Well, I mean, I said that because he had me believing it. The detective, Starzik. Right. Yo, he. He made me pee my pants. And then he had me believing I'd done it. It's a lot of believing to do, if you didn't. Well, well, whose side are you on? I'm on your side. You believe I didn't kill him? Yeah, Romy. I believe you didn't do it. Good night, Carol. Good night. Drive safely. I will. See you tomorrow. Okay. Listen, I, I, I don't mean to... Keep buying perfume that you don't want, <laughs> so you waited till the store was closed? I need someone to talk to about the case. You're in a law firm. I know, I know. I'd rather talk to you. That's the truth. That's the truth. We can talk. Good. Starzik, ask him to imagine why he couldn't remember. It was Romy who said he might have been dusted. And with someone like Romy, just thinking it is enough to confuse his mind. Ah, pretty clever of Starzik. But not illegal. I grant you that, but when I was out there talking to him, I realized Romy was never sure. It was Starzik who was sure. That doesn't mean he was wrong. Cops get it right a lot of the time, and he convinced Muriel Wynn, which isn't easy. It was Muriel's first big case. I know, I know, I'm... I'm reaching, but I just have the feeling that Starzik convinced himself by convincing Romy. And today, talking to this poor man through the glass, I realized he, he doesn't know. He doesn't know anymore what he did or did not do. It's up to me to know, to be sure, for him. Here you are, sir. Thank you. Oh, there's a breeze. Are you cold? No, not at all. <clears throat> Are you? No, no. Do you remember that time you came to my house to get the search warrant for Muriel Wynn? I wasn't in the best of shape that night. Really? <laughs> I was in terrible shape. I was worse. Well, I, I do know that I was out of sorts not an uncommon occurrence and uh whatever you were I, I wouldn't have noticed my sister susan died the week before oh oh I, I i didn't know what happened she killed herself with a drug overdose susan was a heroin addict she used to say it takes a whole lot of medicine to feel like somebody else and heroin was the most medicine there was. Oh, Arthur, I am so, so sorry. 
When it first happened, I wanted to track down her dealer and kill him. I think a, a lawyer always has to feel someone's to blame. Somebody's got to be guilty. You're a good man, Arthur Raven. And the law is lucky to have you. Your hand? Are you cold? No. No, I'm not. Are you? I'm fine. I'm freezing. Oh, me too. Jackson Ayers won't let his client testify without immunity, Arthur, and we don't see that as appropriate. This is my client's last chance in court, Muriel. Surely if Farwell has relevant information, he should be deposed. I found out who hired Ayers to represent Farwell. Erno or die. So? Uh, let's not play Peter Pan here, Arthur. Erno doesn't want Farwell to testify. Do you want him to testify? Hiring Jackson Ayers is a gag order. Not if you grant immunity. It doesn't help my case. It's not going to happen. Yeah, exactly. Because you don't want his testimony on record. That's how the law works, Arthur, in case you've forgotten. Well, perhaps we should ask Judge Harlow about how the law works. Judge Harlow interprets the law. He doesn't reinvent it. But on the subject of depositions, we are going to depose Genevieve Carrier. Who? She was a friend of Louisa Romardi's. And what does she have to add to the sum of knowledge? Well, you're just going to have to show up and find out. It's the reason I was calling, to let you know she's being represented by Marta Stern's office. Thank you for being here today, Mrs. Carrier. You are under oath. You spoke to me after the court hearing in which Mr. Erno Erdai claimed to, among other things, have had an affair with Louisa Romardi. And you expressed doubt about Erno's claim at that time. Is that correct? That's right. What led you to this opinion? Louisa told me quite a bit about the men she saw. There were a number of men? There were a few. Don't misunderstand me. She wasn't a tart, like he said. But she could be... pragmatic. Could you explain what you mean by pragmatic, exactly? When she had an itch, she'd scratch it. I see. Could Mr. Erdai have been the cause of such an itch? No way. What makes you so certain? Louisa didn't like him. That's why she was mad at me for talking to him and getting her searched. Something you told Mr. Erdai caused him to have her searched? Yes. What was it that you told him, Mrs. Carrier? One night, a man came into the airport looking for Louisa. She wasn't there, so he talked to me. He told me to give her a message. What was the message? He said he talked to Pharaoh, and she wasn't going to get away with it. Pharaoh, as in the Egyptian Pharaoh. I guess so. He said he wanted his share. He said he talked to Pharaoh and Pharaoh... Pharaoh said she wasn't going to get away with it. Yes. Did you know this man who came into the airport? I'd never seen him before. Did he say what it was Louisa wasn't going to get away with? No. What made you tell Erno about this? He was head of security. And you felt that this was a security matter, not a personal thing? Yes. When a person says they're going to kill someone, it's definitely a security matter. Yeah, well, you didn't tell me about that, Genevieve. Why didn't you tell Sergeant Starzik about this threat when he questioned you? I didn't want to get Louisa into trouble. She was dead, Mrs. Carrier. How were you going to get her into trouble? Was Louisa stealing airline tickets, Mrs. Carrier? Yes. She had a pension coming. The airline was very strict. If it came out about the tickets, her pension would be gone. Her kids would get nothing. I didn't want to be the cause of that. Okay, so let me understand your testimony thus far. A man you didn't know told you that another man named Pharaoh said Louisa wasn't going to get away with it. And the man who came into the airport also said if he didn't get his share, he was going to kill Louisa. And none of this you felt inclined to share with Sergeant Starzik when he questioned you about your friend's murder? My client is cooperating with you, Counselor. There is no need to treat her as a hostile witness. When do you think you would have been willing to share this with us, Mrs. Carrier? If you hadn't caught him. You're telling us we did catch him. Really, Muriel? Answer the question. Yes, you caught him. And he confessed. You're saying the man who threatened to kill Louisa Romardi was Squirrel Gandalf? Yes, it was. As God is my judge.
Looks like I gotta find this feral. Thanks, Larry. Hey, I'm not the one with the poster. I know what I mean. You are? Anyway, congratulations. Arthur. I almost heard his heart drop when she said if we hadn't caught him. Uh, like Genevieve's a piece of work sitting on something like that. I think maybe she was a part of the ticket scan. Could be. God is your judge. Well, what would you recommend? These two are franchises. Oh, yes. This um, is the best seller, but this one is actually my favorite. There's some... Uh, will, you, will you excuse me for just a minute? What's wrong? He did it. He did it, Jillian. Wait here. I have to let someone know I'm leaving. you like this. You're a great advocate. I'm in love with you, Jillian. I know that sounds... Well, I don't know how that sounds. Crazy, perhaps. It's all mixed up with this case. When I found out that Squirrel had threatened to kill Louisa Rimardi, I thought, okay, that's it. It's over. And then I thought, I might not ever see you again. And I can't let that happen. And I don't know how you feel. I mean, sometimes I do, but then you, you shut down. You just go away. And I'm crazy for you. And I... Well, I said it. So give me my shirt and send me on my way, or... Or, or what? I don't know. Take off your shirt. Uh, I was speaking metaphorically. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. I like it. <gasps> I like it a lot. I know. It's supposed to be like riding a bike. <clears throat> the thing is, I was never very good at riding a bike. I know how to ride a bike. Starving. I could eat everything on this bed, <laughs> including the blanket. <laughs> You're eating flavored vinyl. You're eating decayed mollusks. Well, you bought them. No, I didn't. They were in the cabinet. Oh, they're from the last tenant. Did you really believe Gandalf was innocent? No. 
I did. And you believed Erno's story? And maybe it's somehow true. Maybe it's too soon to give up on Romeo Gandalf. Why didn't you tell me you threatened to kill Louisa Ramardi? Who, who, who said that? Genevieve Carrier. Oh. Is that what she said? Under oath to the prosecuting attorney. Well, I, I was just trying to scare. Well, that's just great, Romy. Well, I would have told you that. You never would have took my case. I didn't take your case. It was given to me. If you had told me, I could have tried to mitigate. I, I, I might have been prepared. Oh, well, is this bad? It's very bad. This can throw doubt on Erno's confession. It confirms your confession. But I just said it to get her to fork over what she owed me. What did she owe you? For putting her in with Pharaoh. Who's Pharaoh? The dude I put her in with. Does this have to do with stolen airline tickets? Right. See, I, I fixed her up with this dude that could get them tickets cashed. And she was supposed to be putting something my way. But I talked to Pharaoh. He said he was chipping to her, but she wasn't chipping to me. So that's when I went over to, to that... Um, Genevieve. Yeah, I told her to tell her that if she didn't give me what she owed me, I was going to kill her. But I didn't mean anything. I mean, I was just trying to get her attention. And did you? You better believe it. That's when she gave me that cameo. Said it was worth a lot on account of them pictures of her babies. Louisa Ramardi gave you that cameo? Sure enough. Yeah, said it been in her family since way back. Said it, it was worth more than money, and I should hold on to it until she got what she owed me. But then she went and got herself killed. But not by you? No, I told you, I ain't killed nobody. Who's Pharaoh? This, this dude that was in on the tickets. That's the only name you have, Pharaoh. That's what he called himself. You don't have any idea where I can find him? You never heard of him again? I've been on the road seven years. All I know is he ain't been here with me. <laughs> Mr. Arthur, you, you, you can't give up on me now. Um, I'm sorry for not telling you stuff. But God's truth, I ain't never killed nobody. Nowhere. And, and you don't believe me? Then, then I'm a goner. For sure. Hi. Counselor, how's it going? It's not going very well. Likewise. Did you know that Squirrel threatened to kill Louisa? Mm hmm You didn't tell the court that? Mm hmm Why not? Tickets. I don't want to get into that stuff. Would have made your claim that Squirrel had nothing to do with it a lot less plausible, too. Squirrel didn't have anything. <laughs> <sighs> Mm. Were you stealing tickets, Erno? What if I promise you it'll go no further than this room? I don't think you can make that promise, Counselor. I'm not being my lawyer at all. Louisa was stealing tickets. Mm. And you weren't having an affair with her, were you? Mm. With you, Erno, the truth is just a lie that hasn't been discovered yet. Better half-truth than no truth at all.
here. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I appreciate it. You bet. We need your expertise on the West Side. Ladies, this here. We have to get the voters to come out. Now, that means going door to door and canvassing. Ladies and gentlemen, Muriel Wynn needs no introduction from me. You know her record, and you know her character. Come on up and be recognized. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. I know it's the lobster and the dill sauce that are mostly responsible, so I'm not getting too excited. <laughs> Love you. The latest report now from Rudyard Prison is that Mr. Erdai is in critical condition and is under intensive care. Of course, it was Erno Erdai's statement that reopened the Romeo Gandalf murder conviction. With me now is Ribbon Mr. Rocks. Gandalf's attorney, yes. Arthur Raven. Mr. Raven, in light of this news that Mr. Erdai's condition is deteriorating, are you concerned that the state is unnecessarily delaying this procedure? Uh, Muriel Wynn has a job to do, and um, I have my job to do, and we're, we're making progress. Anyway, I appreciate your support and admire your digestions. Thank you for coming tonight. Thank you. You should have stayed. Listen to me spread the bull. Oh, I hate politicians. Wouldn't want to lose respect for you. So to what do I owe the pleasure? You want a drink? Do I need one? Hard to say. Pharaoh. Pharaoh. Yeah, what about him? What if it's spelled F-A-R-O like the card game? So what? So, Pharaoh, F-A-R-O, Cole, is the guy that Erno shot in Ike's. That's what got him sent down. Well, how do you know that? Oh, three hours on the computer and this old fart and robbery who finally got his head out of his ass and remembered. What would it mean? I don't know. Which I don't like. Anything on this Pharaoh since he was shot? No, could be his real name isn't Pharaoh and he isn't using it anymore. Or maybe somebody shot him better than Erno did. Anyway, I'll keep looking. I just wanted you to know that your husband's behind you. Tell me, you remember Sergeant Starzak? Indeed. Hey, good to see you again. Well, that's it for now, Counselor. Thanks, Larry. You still need to finish up in there, Muriel. There are palms to be pressed, grandchildren to be remembered. I still have business to attend to, Talmadge. It wasn't a social thing. Nobody says it was, but there's an old rule in politics. First things first. It's called. You gotta remember this one. A guy shot a guy in a cop bar. Erno or die. Should be in the backlog if it hasn't been ditched. Why would it be ditched? If the case is closed, we can't keep everything forever. Especially drugs and small denomination bills. You're confusing us with somebody else, Sergeant. Easily done. of evildoers. Ah, another Smith & Wesson's cures for insomnia. What's the story? Well, four years ago, a certain Erno Erdai of lying through his teeth fame shot a certain feral coal of present whereabouts unknown fame. Since said Erno is presently incarcerated, it must be Mr. Cole that interests you. You are not a pretty face, Mo, but that did not stop you from getting the big picture. Uh, Erno said he took this gun from Pharaoh in the parking lot and then, get this, Chased him into Ike's. Ike's. 
shot him in the back in front of a dozen cops. I think Farrell Cole's prints might be on that gun. Of course, Erno might have been lying about taking it off in the first place. That is always a possibility. Can you check these cartridges in the casing, too? Is this a priority, Larry? It's a favor. Oh, just a favor. Protect me from favors. I'd rather have an official priority any day. Well, then, consider it an official priority favor. Yeah, it's just odd. For a while there, it looked like you had something going. I visited Erno Erdi in the hospital. He was pretty out of it. But he still insists he did it alone. Yes, well, I suppose he's entitled to his opinion. He's dying. As we speak. It's just... Such a strange way to go out. Lying? Oh, there's two guys of liars in my experience, aren't there? The kind that want other people to believe them, and the kind that want to believe themselves. Oh, Arthur, one other matter. Word is you're seeing Julian Sullivan socially. Ordinarily, your private life would be just that, entirely your business. But I'm sure when you think about it, you'll see that it's not a very savory association. I'm not sure I agree with you on that, Walter. No, perhaps not. But you must reflect on it, from all points of view. See it in the round. That's the important thing. You know, we should go out to dinner next time. I don't know if I'm comfortable with that. I don't understand. It's not as if you're hiding. Working in a department store in a city where you're known. Would being seen in public with a man be so terrible? If it compromises you, yes. I'm not being compromised. You might be. What happened, Jillian? Was it the drinking thing? Did it cloud your judgment? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to pry. Yes, you do. And you're entitled. In common pleas court, there's a lot of money slushing around. Comes your way without you needing to go look for it. This is not an excuse, it's an explanation. The presiding judge of common pleas was Brendan Tui. Do you remember him? Judge Tui liked things to go according to plan. His plan. Money was the way that was arranged. I've heard of Tui. He was a villain. But why would you... Ever think I might be a villainess? I think you're a damsel in distress. And you're my knight in shining armor? That's how I've always pictured myself. The thing about rescuing damsels, Arthur, is you have to make sure they're not on the same side as the dragons. Is that a warning of some kind? <clears throat> Just don't turn me into something I'm not. You're the woman I love, Jillian. That's the only thing I'm making you into. Well, that's the best I've been in a long time. before his death, sir? Yes, a few days ago. Did he maintain his claim of having been responsible for the crimes Romeo Gandalf is due to be executed for? Yes, he did. Can we assume Mr. Erdai took the truth of the matter to the grave with him? You can assume whatever you like. Did you believe him, sir? Is that a no comment? Mr. Raymond, Romeo Gandalf has been caught down there by the death, sir. Larry, how's it going? Great, I... Bob? Hey, Larry. <laughs> Little B. Bourbon rocks. Oh, good riddance to that lion son of a bitch. 
That guy look familiar to you? Oh, Arthur Raven? He's just going the last mile. Nah, the guy behind him. That is Erno's nephew, Collins Farwell. Another lying son of a bitch. You know him? That's the guy that Erno shot in here. Uh, what's his name? Uh... Farrell Cole? That's Farrell Cole. Yeah, you can ask the guys who were here, but uh, I'll bet you drink it's him. That means something? Hello? It's me. Larry. I didn't know you had this number. I'm a cop, Muriel. I got everybody's number. We need to talk. Farrell Cole is Collins Farwell. You still standing? Yeah, I think we should meet. I'm down at Ice. No, I can't meet you there. Okay, I'll be at 1193 Wildway Lane. Is that your house? No. It's a place I'm fixing up. Old wood, two-story driveway on the side. How long will you be? Look, uh, maybe we should wait until tomorrow at my office. I don't think so. <sighs> Give me an hour. I've got people here. I'll be there. Something wrong? No, no, no. It's just, um, something's come up. I'll have to go out later. Anything I should know about? No, just another wrinkle in the Gandalf case. It's Arthur Raven. He thinks he's found another piece of exculpatory evidence. He wants to talk me into immunizing Farwell. Are you sure about the Farrell connection? Ike and the three cops who were there when Erno shot him are sure. Damn it. Why wasn't that known at the time? A man almost shot to death was never identified as the perp's nephew. Hey, we aim at the stars, but sometimes we hit Cleveland. What can I say? Somebody screwed up. I'll say. Maybe the ID said Farrell Cole instead of Collins Farwell. Fake IDs are not unheard of. What would that mean? I don't know. Yet. Erno says he got Collins out of a life sentence by framing Squirrel. Now it seems that Collins was involved in some ticket scam with Louisa. Two to three years later, Erno shoots Collins, goes to jail. Collins takes off for Boston and goes straight as a travel agent. A month ago, Erno comes up with a mea culpa but doesn't bother to mention that he once shot his nephew, hires a lawyer for him who tells him not to testify unless he gets immunity. When you talk to Collins, he says that every night he asks God to forgive him. That's right. Have I missed something? Just that Erno's gone before the big bench, and Arthur Raven does not know what we know. And that's the way we ought to keep it. Uh, none of this means that Squirrel's innocent. Maybe Erno was there. Hell, maybe Farwell was there too. That does not mean Squirrel didn't do it. You don't think Squirrel would have remembered maybe he wasn't alone sometime over the last seven years? Mm -hmm. You don't have any doubts, Larry. I'll tell you what I do have, Ariel. I got a vested interest in this case being the way it is. And damn it, so do you. This case made you. You pick it apart now, it can unmake you. What about you? I'm a cop. I did my job. Won't change my pension. But you, it could stop dead. Aren't we missing the point? think so.
like yesterday. Years later, and it seems like yesterday. Mm. You didn't know you missed it. Mm. Hell, you're lucky I miss it every day. You're gonna tell Arthur about Farwell, aren't you? Yeah. Don't have a choice on that one. Remember me? Yes. I remember you. I read about all about it. Well, that's all past now. Are you all right? I mean, yeah, I'm fine. How about yourself? Well, I have my moments, you know. But I have it under control. You look great. I'm meeting someone. Oh, he's here. Yes. Uh, Look, I'm sorry. I just saw you and it all sort of came back. It's nice seeing you. You look great. Thanks. Hey. One of my customers. How are you? I'm better than Muriel. She called me before I left. Pharaoh Cole, the man Erna went to prison for shooting, is his nephew, Collins Farwell. What does that mean? That means Muriel is going to have to depose him, even if she has to grant immunity to do it. That's good. <laughs> Listen, I don't feel like dinner. Do you mind if we just go back to my place and order in? Did she say something to upset you? Who? Oh, no. I just don't feel like it. Please. All right. I'm starving. Uh, we can get pizza. Pizza's good. Hey, Larry! Oh. Uh, about that gun. I got it. I got it. Official priority. Oh, well, I never should have put you on it, Mo. I got the ID from another source. Ah, uh, I did good on this one, too. Uh, two parcels, one I lifted off dried blood. Pretty tricky stuff. Or die, on the cylinder, on the frame. Uh, this guy's on the barrel. You'd have an argument in court, but they're the real deal. Well, like I said, Mo, I'm sorry. Three for the price of one, Larry. Leonidas. Gus Leonidas. His fingerprints were on the shell casings. Gus had a record. Way back in 57, before he owned a diner, Gus got mixed up in a bar brawl. He was never charged, but he was booked and printed. The shells tie Gus to this weapon. I'll see that that gets back, Mo. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. This is not what you wanted. It's not getting what you want, Mo. It's wanting what you get. Old Hungarian proverb.
confused. You didn't seem confused the last hour and a half. Don't exaggerate. Half hour tops. Don't give up on us, Muriel. Don't give up on us? What is that supposed to mean? You don't have this with him. Don't do this, Larry. We have enough problems as it is without you doing this. And we have to get through this case. It's what we do. Oh, it's beautiful. Let's sell everything we own and buy that boat. And? And sail south. <laughs> Did you know I had a relationship with Toby Elias? He used to be in the prosecutor's office. Toby Elias? He died in a car crash? Was he? I mean, I heard. He was driving under the influence. He was. Was it, um... Did you love him? I was under his influence. Toby was another one who thought the rules didn't apply to him. And so... Together, we were mutually supportive. I don't know if I loved him. Is that the sort of thing you forget? Uh, what? What, Jillian, what's wrong? It isn't gonna last, you know? What are you talking about? Don't go building castles on quarter-acre lots. You are no quarter-acre lot, Jillian Sullivan. On this matter of Mr. Farwell's conscience, Ms. Wynn, may God forgive me for what I did to Gandalf, sir. I'd say you've sailed a little close to the breeze here. Surely you should have made known to the court Mr. Farwell's statement before this. It wasn't a statement, Your Honor. It was a remark made in an emotional state to an investigating officer. But I wish I had. And you have. And it must be clear to you, Mr. Raven, that if the prosecutor really wanted to do you dirt, we wouldn't be here now. I'll stipulate to that, Your Honor. I must say, Ms. Wynn, the case for hearing what Collins Farwell has to say is very powerful. Don't you want to know what the hell really happened? I'm afraid I have to content myself with the law correctly applied, Your Honor. According to the legislature, the right to grant immunity is mine alone. Mm. So, you think that disclosing tidbits, like Farwell has a bad conscience about Mr. Raven's client, like his uncle shot him over something that may or may not have to do with these murders, you think that meets your legal obligations in this case? Yes, Your Honor, I do. And your moral obligation? Morals are matters for conscience, Your Honor. And yours is clear? Well, you have the power not to grant immunity. I have the power to entertain certain findings. Mr. Raven has the power to make sure they're heard far and wide. He as much as told Arthur to go hold a press conference. Is he going to? No, not Arthur. He looked as surprised as I did. I mean, where does Harlow get off pulling that kind of crap? So you're not going to immunize Farwell? No. Let Arthur get a statement out of him. Let him deal with Jackson Ayers. Well, I think you should hear what Farwell has to say. Oh, really? Is this just curiosity, the kind Harlow was talking about? What's that? That's Gus Leonidas's gun. Same gun Erno used to shoot Farwell at Ike's. How do you know it's Gus's? Because his prints are on the casings. Or at least they were. I wiped them clean. You what? What do you think you're playing at, Sergeant? I'm not playing at anything. I've never done anything like that before. I'm just covering your ass, Muriel. 
By hiding the possible murder weapon? I never asked you to do anything for me. Except get you this case in the first place. Squirrel's confession. Was that legitimate? No, I'm just a dumb cop, Muriel. He confessed. As far as I'm concerned, he did it. You don't need to worry. Like hell I don't. You've just admitted to me that you destroyed evidence linking Erno to the shootings. Yeah, that's right, but I didn't destroy all the evidence. There's ballistics. So I'm gonna have to dump all this stuff if you want it off the table. You would do that. Uh, you know, I think I would. But you'd have to ask me. I couldn't do that. To either one of us. Well, my conscience is in safekeeping with you, Mary. I'll put it back. And we better hear what Farwell's got to say. Put this damn case to rest once and for all. I know why you want a grand jury, Muriel. To keep Arthur, the crusading rabbit, in the dark. Arthur will see the transcript, Jackson. <laughs> of answers to questions that won't help his client worth a nickel. What's your problem? Your client gets immunity no matter what I ask him. You got to understand something here, Muriel. My client wants to clear his conscience. Ugh. To tell his tale. A man can't do that answering lawyer questions, political questions. I don't care for the implication there. Oh, so you ain't running for office? This ain't the case that started your meteoric rise. Oh, come off it, Jackson. No, you come off it. Here's the deal, Muriel. You swear Collins Farwell in before the grand jury. That takes Arthur out of the picture. Then you adjourn it, we all come over here, and my client gets to have his say, the way he wants to say it. And you get what you want, which is to keep what he says from Arthur and the press until you have a plan. Now, ain't it easier doing it my way? Fine. All right. To all intents, you are still before the grand jury, Mr. Farwell. Proceed. What you ask for, you tell it, we listen. It all comes down to one thing. Squirrel Gandalf didn't have no part of killing them three people. You seem very sure of that. Yeah, well, I ought to be. I was there. I met Squirrel hanging out. Scoring, doing drugs, selling his little trinkets. And he got to telling me about this woman that worked out by the airport. He said that she used to buy stuff off him every once in a while. So I asked him if she was ever near any airline tickets, and he said, yeah, yeah, she was. But see, you know, Squirrel, you don't ever really know. I mean, he ain't wound up too tight. I mean, he don't know too much of nothing. But see, I went out there just the same, you know, just on the if. When I seen Louisa, I mean, I mean, that woman, she was something else. She, she was hot. So we, uh, we did us some business together and we did us some pleasure at the same time. Anyway, she started bringing me these tickets on account I was working at this travel agency that Erno done hooked me up with, this place called Triple T. Time to travel. Well, come on, you know how I go. I was bottom rung and I was black. I mean, I was gonna be old and snowy before I ever signed in a big corporate account, so I went ahead and I did it. I took the tickets, I slipped them into the system, I pocketed the money and I covered my tracks. And there was money in it for everybody. For me, for Louisa. Well, there was supposed to be something in it for Squirrel, only seems he wasn't getting it. That was about the time when he go out by the airport and he threatened Louisa, but see, the problem is Arnold, he done found out about it. 
So next thing he come at me and we get in this big old argument and he hollering at me telling me it's a matter of time before I'm gonna get caught. See, I wasn't trying to hear none of that. I mean, I was doing drugs and they was doing me right back. So I kept right on seeing Louisa and she kept right on scamming them tickets. So on that night, me and Louisa, we was, we was hanging out at Gus's spot. <laughs> but see, Gus, he didn't much like seeing blacks and whites together, so... We was just about ready to get up out of there, but then all of a sudden, here come Erno, and he all fired up. You bitch. You're not kidding. Right away, he start on Louisa. He's telling her the game is up. He knows she's been stealing them tickets, and, and she better quit right then and there and hand in her resignation, otherwise he's gonna turn her in. He says. you, Louisa, I swear. Erno, what are you talking about? What's wrong with you, man? See, you know, Louisa, I mean, she wasn't one to scare too easy, you know? Point me and your little nephew will be doing plenty. And you'll be out of a job because I'll tell him I'm kicking back to you. See, Erno, he went after her. Because, you know, now he mad. See, he get all red-eyed sometimes. I told you this you get you screwed. So he pulling her hair, trying to get her up out of there. And so I jump up on him. You know, I'm trying to get him up off of her. Get her hands up out of her hair. Let her go. Leave, now. See, all of a sudden, here come Gus. And he hollering, he screaming, and he waving his shooter in the air. Leave, now. Put that away, Gus, before somebody gets hurt. <laughs> Somehow, Louisa, she, she, she reached out and she grabbed the gun from Gus. I mean, she must have surprised him or something. I don't know. I mean, see, Gus, he just sort of just gave it up. Damn sure she was going to pull that trigger on Erno if she could have that night. So I push Erno out the way, and me, Gus, we trying to tell her to put the damn gun down. And she just start waving it around, and the next thing I know, she got it looking at me. So I go for the gun, and, you know, I, I turn it away, and then me and Louisa, we get to wrestling. And... Give me the gun, baby. Come on, let the gun go. Come on, baby, please. Let it go. Oh. Standing and looking at each other, me, Gus, and Erno. Louisa got shot in the gut. No, no. I mean, she sort of just fall back in the booth, and there's just this blood everywhere. And, and all I'm saying is, 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 don't you die. Come on, baby, don't you die on me. So Gus, he go running for the phone, right? Because he said he gonna call the police. And me, I ain't moving. I'm staring at Louisa. You know, you're gonna be all right, baby. And she, she just holding herself. She's just making a big old puddle. Erno, he must have picked up the gun. I don't know. I didn't see it. The next thing I know, I hear this shot. I mean, I look over and he done shot Gus in the back of the head. No, 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 no. She gone. I mean, she showed her. She just laid her head down on the table in her. I mean, she died right there in front of me. So I, I didn't know what to do. I mean, I was losing it. I started yelling at Erno. What the hell did you do? I mean, what you gotta shoot Gus for? I mean, you crazy. He's telling me don't panic. Look, we can get out of this. What? Get out of this? How the hell are we gonna get out of this? You killing people, I'm saying. There's a dude right there at the end of the bar. He saw everything we did. Everything we did. See, it was me. Don't shoot me. I'm not gonna shoot you. That was me who did that to that poor son of a bitch. So Erno, he run over there and he grabbed up that man. Oh, baby, what did you do? He bring him back over by me and Louisa, and he tell him to grab her and take her to the back. Now, I tried to stop him, but see, I couldn't do nothing because Erno, he had that gun on him. Erno, come on, man. Take it to this Go on. This is crazy. Look what you're doing. Come on, come on. Just drag her. She don't feel like it. Erno, please, man. Just think. And then he look at me and tell me to go get Gus, and I wasn't trying to help him no way, but he tells me I'm going to go down for three strikes if I don't listen to him. Look, I didn't have no choice. So I go and I grab Gus. I'm trying to pull him back. I'm trying to get him back there to the cooler. And I hear another shot. And I swear when I heard that, I knew right then and there we was all going to hell. I mean, Louisa, she was an accident. So help me God she was. All right. All right, I'm coming. And Gus, you know, more than likely, I mean, before Erno had time to think. But what he did to that poor man. And that, that was cold-blooded. So when I get to the back with Gus, Erno, he tells me to lay him down over by that man. And, Put him over there. I mean, to tell you the truth, I thought for sure he was going to do me too, you know, just to be rid of me for all the problems I done caused him, but... Come on, man. Come on, you ain't gonna shoot me too, now, is you? I'm gonna shoot you? We're kin. He just started going on about how I was kin, and he, he don't hurt his own kind. I don't shoot my own. And then he says in this real calm, business-like voice, he says, Change your shoes with his. It looks like they might fit. What? You got blood on your shoes, son. Switch with the guy. He looks like he's about your size. He, he was right. So after that, you know, we... We just cleaned everything up, you know. We, we took the cash, we wiped off the prints. I mean, we gave it that rob we went wrong look, just like Arno said. I mean, you know, he was smart like that. I mean, he was on top of all of that stuff. You know, that's it. We, we turned out the lights and we left.
Who sodomized Louisa? Was it you? Well, somebody did after she was dead. It wasn't nothing like that. That's where she kept the tickets. They, they was rolled up in a rubber. That, that's where she kept them. I mean, look, I only remembered that when we was leaving. But what was I supposed to do? I had to go back and get them. I mean, if you all found them, everything would have been blown to hell for sure. And you know that. Oh, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for what I've done. I am so sorry. And Squirrel, that was just as Erno said. Oh, didn't nobody care about Squirrel. Nobody paid him any mind until I got busted right after for possession. Like, I don't know. Maybe Erno thought I was going to talk in hell. Maybe I would have. See, it don't matter, see, because Erno, he knew about that cameo. And he called me up and he put me up to it. And y'all folks, well, y'all ate it up something real good. Yeah, well. What about you getting shot at Ike's? I was just trying to boost Erno for some cash. You know? So I went and I dug up the gun from where he buried it. And I went looking for him. And, I mean, I was high. I was way, way high. I was just running my mouth talking crazy about how I was going to turn him in. You know, I found him up in this cop bar. But see, he got me outside before I could say anything in front of him. And then he snatches the gun up off of me. But I said I didn't care. I was going to tell him all just the same. So I turned around and headed back in, but that's when he shot me. But I'll tell you something. It was that bullet right there what it took for me to let Jesus into my heart. He said, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give thee rest. That's some promise, huh? What a mess. The shoes. I noticed the damn shoes. They didn't belong to an insurance salesman. We were set up, Larry. No, nah, it was right. Cops are dumb. I kidded myself, Muriel. About a lot of things. We have to figure out what to do. Well, you do what you gotta do, Counselor. You're the one with the future. Hell of a tale, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it was. Arthur Raven's cup surely runneth over. Arthur will be happy. Happy? He'll think he died and went to heaven. Wins the case, gets the girl, and oh my, squirrel civil suit. <laughs> what do you mean, gets the girl? Uh, you didn't know about the crusading rabbit and the junkie judge? The who? Oh, crusading rabbit, that's my name for Arthur. Who's the junkie judge? Oh, come now, counselor. You didn't know Jillian Sullivan was a smackhead? Well, I thought she had an alcohol problem, but... Well, it wouldn't surprise me one bit, but I know she was a heroin user. I represented folks she used to score from. I always tried to get their cases in her courtroom. Now, that was never mentioned at her trial. Didn't come up. But it was the thing that got her kicked out of criminal. I don't believe it. And she took a habit with her over to civil, where old King Tort himself used it against her when it came to settling suits. Brendan Toohey? He had Judge Sullivan in his pocket from day one. So she was being blackmailed, not bribed. Oh, I'm sure some green changed hands, Muriel. Habits cost money. I guess we all just see and hear what suits us, huh? I'm going to be looking forward to your next press conference, Muriel. It should be a real, uh, humdinger. What are you doing drinking alone? Kind of how I feel. I take it you have a problem. Serious? Well, would you like to fill me in? I have a dinner at 8, Muriel. So Gandalf didn't do it. Erno Erdai was telling the truth. We're close enough. And a new trial would prove this conclusively? Arthur Raven would have to be a lot less competent than he is not to get an acquittal. And the policeman, Larry Starzak, would most likely come out a loser. 
He destroyed evidence. Not during the original investigation. During this appeals process. Why would Sergeant Starsick do that? God's sake, Muriel. He was protecting his initial investigation. And your reputation. Could destroy him if it came out. <laughs> well, it wouldn't do your prospects much good either. So, it seems to me that you and Sergeant Starsek have a problem. There's something else. What? You're pregnant? It was a joke. It's not very funny, Talmadge. No. What else? Jillian Sullivan, the judge who presided at the trial. She was a heroin addict at the time. Are you sure about that? Jackson Ayers alleges. Oh, that's not quite the same thing. No, I've done some inquiries. Checked with Gloria Mingham at the DEA. It was hushed when she went over to Civil, but Brendan Tui knew about it. It was his leverage to get her to play the game his way. Well then, there's your solution. Seems like an awfully cold-blooded thing to do. Well then, do it in cold blood, Muriel. You don't think too clearly when you're hot. You summoned, Muriel. You have news for me? Have a seat. Can I get you something to drink? No, thank you. You deposed Farwell, and he confirmed Erno's statement. Is that what this is about? In part. Farwell's testimony is irrelevant at this stage. Run that by me again. Evidence has surfaced that requires the state to set aside Mr. Gandalf's conviction on the grounds of due process violation. Set aside the conviction? Does this have to do with the way the confession was obtained from him? No, it has to do with the fact that at the time of his trial, the judge was a heroin addict. <laughs> These are depositions taken from several witnesses who confirmed Judge Sullivan purchased heroin from them. You will notice the dates proceed by quite a margin, the date of Mr. Gandalf's trial. Arthur, we can't afford a retrial because it might open up a whole lot of other cases. This is rotten, Muriel. Your client walks, Arthur. He sues for wrongful conviction, and he, O'Grady, Steinberg, Marconi, and Hogan get rich. I know that you have a relationship with Jillian Sullivan, and I'm sorry. Screw you and sorry. Arthur, at any time during these proceedings, Jillian could have given you this information and ended this whole business. Look, I apologize. We got it wrong. And you did a great job putting it right. Good night, Carol. Good night, Jillian. I'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Oh, you have a good break? What's, what's wrong? My client's conviction has been set aside. Congratulations. On what grounds? On grounds of due process violation constituting reversible error. The judge was incapacitated due to being a heroin addict at the time. Why didn't you tell me, Jillian? I swear to you, never. There All was the never time. I was running around in circles. You knew it was just a farce. You just let me blunder on. I don't understand that. Even if you didn't care anything for me. What about the law? Did you lose respect for the law when you lost respect for yourself?
glad you could make it. What's with the romantic meeting place? Things are pretty busy at the office. You know, one thing or another. Yeah, so I guess we're not gonna do the nasty out here. Larry, that Don't was... say mistake. I wasn't going to say a mistake. We only get to do things one way in life. It's not multiple choice. Way back when Talmadge came into my life, I made a decision. And this is where it brought me. Whatever I think about that now, I can't undo it. I won't. I can regret it. I can regret it a lot. Okay. Okay. So, uh, I guess you let Squirrel walk, right? I don't think he did it, Larry. No, I guess not. Thanks for covering for me. I was way out of line. Wasn't thinking straight. Oh, I owed you. And let's not fool ourselves. It helped yours truly. I'm gonna miss you, Sergeant. Anytime you want to put the wrong guy on death row, you know who to come to. Arthur. Arthur Raven, here to pick up my client. Your client? Who's that, Counselor? Romeo Gandalf. They're transporting him from Rudyard this morning to be processed and released. Why? He's not here? Well, he's here, but so is his he attorney. He will be holding a press conference at my office this afternoon. And I will be representing Mr. Gandalf in his civil suit against the state. And listen here, man. Don't be using that last picture from the mob. The one in the car. It's hurting my style. Okay. Okay, I've got a four corner bailiff. How does that happen? You owe me that much, Jillian. It happens when the man you think you love decides to bring his work home. Toby thought it would be fun to toot little evidence just to know what we were speaking of in court. It happens when you learn to smoke it, to avoid nosebleeds and needle marks. And besides, you made Harvard Law Review at 19. You're a judge, for God's sake. You're special. You can control anything until one day. Mr. Maybe, right? Dies in a head-on wreck, and there you are at the cemetery, just like everyone else. Except you've got to have it no one else does. I'm sorry, Arthur. But for the love of God, go away. No. What do you mean, no? I'm leaving. I'm following. What? In my car. I don't want you to follow me. To tell you the truth, Jillian, I don't seem to have a choice. What do you want from me? You. I can't stay here. Not now. Neither can I. 
I quit the firm. I'm free, Jillian. Just like you. I have to be in Trenton by dark. My grandmother wants to see me. Lead on. After that, we could get a room. The country's full of rooms. 